Today you'll be hearing from Zoe from the Drugs Information Centre. She's very receptive and surprisingly open-minded when it comes to medical cannabis in Australia. Regarding the legalisation of cannabis in Australia, uh, I believe all states are coming on board and we're on the verge of total legalisation. In terms of um, my knowledge about that, then I probably can't elaborate any further, but in saying that, I then can confirm that I know it's, it hasn't been passed yet or else our service would be one to know about it. True. First. Yep. Um, yeah, well, you're probably just looking at maybe how long that would take or something. Yeah. I believe yeah. clinical trials have been announced in New South Wales and Victoria is set to follow. And uh, the Premier Mike Baird announced uh, for cancer patients it truly is the best medicine. Yeah, it's, it's basically a moral effort. Um, that's the initiative in it to help people that are sick and suffering unnecessarily and that are looking for a natural form of pain relief. Uh, anyone that uh, is relying on this medicine and they cannot access it, they're having trouble doing so, and uh, they're suffering unnecessarily, and it has to be really brought to the forefront. Mm. And Is that something, um, just that you're saying that you're just passionate about? Yeah, everyone's entitled to their opinions on it, so by all means, you're allowed to, to think that, and you know, it's a very valid point. You know, if there are things that can help people out there, but um, in terms of knowing when that actually, or if that actually would come through, that's not something that I've been informed of here, so I can't actually um, confirm that for you, but it seems like the fact that you're following social media and um, the TV programs, you might even um, hear something there sooner. It will happen within the next 12 months. I was just informed of that. Uh... Yeah, no, not as far as I know of. There could be some other people here that may have heard something, but um, that hasn't been shared with me if that was the case. So it would be interesting to know if that would come through. So I can definitely... Uh, inform my colleagues to look out for any information or um, you know articles or anything like that that we may be provided with. That would be a help because uh, yeah. the, the first step is education and for yeah. a lot of the elderly rely on it too, uh, different forms of treatment. It yeah. truly is the best form of treatment for cancer. Basically the results people have been cured within six to eight weeks and when the healthcare system fails people that are suffering, and this is the last resort, uh, they shouldn't be treated as criminals for trying to heal themselves. You must agree with that. Yeah, I think it is definitely a very difficult situation where there's so many factors that interfere with one another, like you're saying, with you know, what's morally right versus what's ethical or legal. But, um, yeah, it would be good to hear any further findings that they do get from that. But I do know at least on our end with, with this service, even if someone wants to call up, even like you're saying, someone not using it recre recreationally, for example, like you said, a elderly person um, using it as some form of pain relief or therapy. For medical um, use. Yeah, like we, regardless of the use, even recreational here, we, you know, we don't impose any form of judgment or... You know, we certainly don't report anyone to the police or anything like that. So, yeah, in that sense, you know, we're quite understanding of of that on, on our end and often we just provide information on the effects anyway, you know. Well, Not that gives enough. me peace of mind knowing that, uh, you know, you're not against anyone that's really trying to heal themselves or and it's really truly beneficial. You're not trying to stop anyone or pass negative judgment on that for someone that uh, is really in a situation of dire need and, and that's the only thing that they get results from mm. and uh, it's you know strictly for medical use I mean yeah. some people when the prescription drugs fail them and they're looking for you know a natural form of medicine and it's totally a benign substance with mm. very little side effects 
and basically, you know, giving people an appetite when, you know, they're suffering from nausea or, I mean, it really comes down to the fact that you've got to have a high... Mm, yeah, I, I agree that if, you know, people should always, especially in the health professions should do what they can to help their patients and their clients and I do understand on the flip side how it is a controversial matter with um, you know a lot of recreational users who would be saying they support it but obviously not with the intent like you're saying with you know the giving people a chance to continue their life and lead a better life and you know, absolutely um, yeah Whereas others, obviously, who use it more, the one that has the um, DHB strand or with the THC, that does have more of those kind of, um, like, psychotic kind of symptoms, more of, you know, those, like, makes you trip out a bit more and that type of things. And obviously they're the ones that a lot of people can be more interested in legalising, like, at places overseas. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I... I definitely have also heard the flip side of, you know, there are ways to alter the plant. Yeah, it's through a method of, that. absolutely, it's a method of cold extraction where it's not psychotropic and the CBD form is used. Yeah, what they're doing overseas, you look at uh, Colorado, Washington, California, they've all jumped on board and it's had a positive effect for the economy. All the money that's made off it goes back to public schools and hospitals. Oh, okay. And the healthcare system is really overburdened with people that are suffering and the medicine isn't there for them. Whereas yeah. if dispensaries opened up, they can cater to the public. You would receive a card from your doctor that would enable you to purchase the medicine. And they see a lot of people with all sorts of illnesses and ailments and yeah. basically they're saying tell me one thing that cannabis cannot cure it works for everything it really yeah. does it truly is the best medicine and it's about time that uh, everyone is aware of that too and it's a good yeah. thing that you're not negative with your belief about that because you've got to be open-minded and if you've got elderly people that are saying nothing works better than than this cannabis for them They've tried everything. Some people, it's the last resort. It's the last yeah. avenue. Yeah. And you see, yeah. it really is helping in a way that no other medicine can. Yeah. And have you received many calls of people stating that? or? Um, not myself personally, but I have seen the odd uh, report, like you've mentioned in the past, where people with terminal illnesses have reported the positive effects they've had, whereas, as I'm sure you can imagine, on my end, the, the more so that I hear about it is, unfortunately, those bad side effects where people have been using recreationally for, you know, quite some time and it does doesn't negatively impact their lives and, you know, their bodies do become dependent on it, um, you know, which is different. To, um, the addictions like with other drugs but definitely the body does get dependent on it in a negative way so that when people have reported trying to, to stop taking it um, you know, for whatever reason that's their choice mm -hmm. they often need to go through a detoxification program and counselling programs and yeah like mm -hmm. it is hard like it is a long process for them to get off it but like I said it's, it's their choice we don't make anyone we don't force anyone that calls to tell them that they should be stopping or obviously mm. neither starting. Like, it's just completely providing information and services that will be able to assist them in their life. But I'm sure people have seen the reports and um, news about what you said. So it is, I'm sure, gaining more... Um, Momentum in that, yeah, it, yeah. Re it really is. Um, there's been a flood of media coverage, and yeah. you see people that are terminal. It brings people right off their deathbed, and the cannabis yeah. oil. And when it's taxed yeah. and regulated, like alcohol, and when yeah. it's sold and governed, yeah. you see the benefits. They shouldn't demonise recreational use either. Yeah, well, I, unfortunately, I can't make an influence on the government's views, but as far as I'm aware. You know, with the um, 
the justification that they have as to why they do it is supported by research as well. And like I said, I have in my own experience and, uh, and heard others um, and seen people where it has, unfortunately, like any substance, you know, like you're saying, the same as alcohol, mm. same as even prescription medication. That's correct, yeah. If you do, if you use it for the wrong reason and you use too much of it or for too long, then, you know, anything is, is not good in large doses for a long period of time. You know, well, that's correct, you know, moderation, that's right, but yeah. you can't you know make something illegal just because there's a chance that a few people might abuse it because there's people that do need it for a genuine reason and yeah, you know you can't leave you can't leave the victims of illnesses and diseases victims that the children that are having seizures there was yeah. there was one child they were having up to 50 to 100 seizures a day and now they've started wow. taking their oil there's they're down to none a day wow there you go i mean well, the, the results are right there you know, like you're saying, guess you can only hope that um, the people who do manufacture it are making it um, in a safe way and that it's safe for the body. And so it does, you know, maybe some point in the future can help people who do need it. But yes, for now, we certainly don't crucify anyone in any avenue. So, yeah, but thank you for bringing that to my attention. I hadn't Surprisingly, I hadn't heard anything about that. Yeah, I'm astounded, that, and uh, it's good that you don't don't you don't demonise anyone. Thanks as well for um, yeah, providing that information anyway, and yeah, just sharing you know more you know. <laughs> yeah, well, look, it's good that uh, people are talking about it, and it's in the public sector, and you know that that's the first way is you know to educate the public on it because people have still got a negative outlook on it because of what they've been told the misinformation that's out there you know people are saying oh it's terrible and you know all these bad things but you know it's misinformation stigma is what's driving people to have those outlooks but uh, you know it will happen you will see it legal taxed regulated and in a safe way distributed within the community and hopefully we can get some of these patients on the track to recovery and yeah. they won't be suffering unnecessarily because the government hasn't got the courage to make it legal for the people that need it the most I'm, I am very passionate about it I have been for a long time I was yeah. circulating a petition within my local community to get it regulated and taxed and uh, oh, really? yeah yeah really and there's been over 5,000 signatures that have been put forward uh, state and federal government Okay. Yeah, and it's all happening. The, what uh, area was that that you were doing that in? That was in Queensland. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I've found that the public have welcomed the petition within open arms, you know. Maybe five or six years ago, you wouldn't have seen that. Yeah. Uh, people would have been a little bit more taken back by it, but now, right. due to the media coverage that's been put forward, people are more open-minded, and when it comes down to helping, uh, you will see it happen. Like I said, I'm sorry I couldn't help you any further with, you know, with that information to do with those legislations and stuff. But mm. yeah, at least you know, it sounds like you were pleased to know that this service is, you know, basically indifferent. You know, we're not mm. promoting or or you know judging people for it. It's just we just hear people's stories, and if they mm. want some help, then that's the time we'll offer it. Well, that's about all the time we have for today. Be sure to join us for more medical cannabis interviews.